welcome to this week's resource review. Today I'm going to be talking about commonsensemedia.org, which is a website some of you may have already had some familiarity with. Commonsense.org is where we as a district get our digital citizenship curriculum, but the website has a lot of other really great features that you may find useful. We're going to look at two different places on this site today. One is the For Parents section, which is helpful for those of you who are parents, but it's also helpful for you to give information out to parents. And then the For Educators section of this website. So in the For Parents section, there's a lot of information for parents about how to be digitally literate uh, with applications, websites, books, movies that their children might be interested in. For example, they do a lot of reviews on movies, TV shows, and books. So one of the movies that just came out recently was the Trolls movie. So I'm going to go ahead and search for it in here. And see it gives you the original Trolls movie and then the Trolls World Tour. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue reading. One of the great things about this website is the depth of the reviews that they give. So they talk about what parents say about this movie, for what age children should be able to watch this movie, and then also what kids say, um, how old kids should be. So interesting that parents think younger kids than kids themselves think should be able to watch this movie. And then Common Sense Media has their own recommendation. You can also um, look at a review in a video form, um, a minute and nine seconds, so they're not terribly long. They do link to the trailers and uh, other pictures and other things like that. They also give these categories which are very uh, specific in the information that they give you. So they talk about educational value, positive messages, etc. But things that are usually important to me when I'm reviewing something for watching it in my classroom or recommending it to a parent are violence, uh, they say sexy stuff here, <laughs> and language. When you click on this it tells you exactly what uh, kind of information is in that movie. So you can see as it's written here, it's very, very specific. The same thing is true with the language. They will tell you exactly what words they're using and how intense the language is. The same thing is true with the violence and the scariness. They will talk very specifically about the type of violence that's happening. Not as applicable for a children's movie like Trolls, but if you're considering watching a movie based on a book that your students are reading, for example, maybe your students read The Hunger Games and you kind of want to see what's in the movie version before you recommend it for watching at home or show it in your own classroom, then you can see exactly what it is that uh, the movie contains. They also have this, What Parents Need to Know. There's um, supplementary material for parents and then they also have the user reviews down here at the bottom. There's also advice and articles. These are great newsletter type items to send out to parents. If you do regular communication with parents about how to connect with their children at home, these are the, the kinds of things you can use um, to accompany your own material. Um, so if you're encouraging families to watch and discuss videos together, um, you could send home this article to go along with it. One of the features I like most in these reviews is this section to talk to your kids about. Um, and that gives parents a list of questions to ask their kids that really deepen conversations that they might have with their children as they're watching a movie like this. This could be awesome for uh, distance learning right now if you want to encourage you know movie night together watch this movie talk about these things with your kids but the parent section in common sense media doesn't just review movies and television shows they also review apps and games so say for example you're a parent who is not on your phone very much and um, your kids are on the phone all the time. So let's say you teach sixth grade and your child wants to download TikTok, the, um, the app. You can search for that on here and it will um, give you a review for that as well. So if I click on here, you can see that if you have a sixth grader who is, what, 11 years old? You can see that Common Sense Media rates it as age 15 plus. Kids, however, think kids age 12 plus could be okay with it. And the same type of information 
is available here um, that is for the movie reviews that I just showed you. So again, you have um, these specific descriptions of what the app contains, what parents need to know, what parents say, what kids say, is it any good? What you can talk to your kids about is the most important thing to me when it comes to apps. For example, privacy, um, what it means for downloading. Um, and then there's also positive questions too. It's not all warning. It's all, okay, if you're going to use this app, here are some of the ways that you could use it positively. Finally, if you're looking for, again, for information to send out to parents, there is this parents need to know section. Um, which gives you specific topic related uh, information for parents. So there's parents ultimate guides to a number of popular resources. There's also privacy and online safety, violence in the media. For age, you could, if you teach preschool, you could look at um, all of the information for parents by the age group of the kids that you teach. And then there are also a lot of resources in Spanish, which for those of you who have Spanish speaking parents, or if you uh, teach dual immersion, this would be a good example of material that you can use. Finally, there is a resection on research. Some of this information overlaps, but this is uh, very interesting information, a little bit more intellectual than some of the, the more consumer type information they have on their website. And then finally, um, they do also have a coronavirus section to talk about how you can uh, support your children and parents at home. Um, and then there's, they do have a new podcast that's mentioned up here on the top banner, and it's also mentioned here called Parent Trapped, which helps parents think about um, how to manage home at home learning during the coronavirus shutdown. So that was the parents for parents section of this website. The For Educators website is equally as helpful. Um, there is a significant section on digital citizenship, which um, all of us at different grade levels are covering in different ways. So that is accessible right here. But there's also a big section on ed tech reviews. Um, they do just as good of a job on their education technology reviews as they do on their book, movie, app, resource reviews. Um, so they have a whole section on ed tech reviews. <clears throat> so, for example, uh, many of us uh, use Edpuzzle, which is a uh, website that allows you to embed questions and videos. And when I click on it, you can see the review for this resource here. It does mention which grades it is applicable to. Um, it Just like the movies and TVs showed a parent's and a child rating, this one shows common sense and teachers. Um, and then they also talk about privacy rating, which is interesting when you think about um, teaching students under 13, there are a lot more restrictive laws about what you can and cannot um, have students access with their own identity information. Um, so that's helpful when deciding what we're going to choose um, to use in our classrooms. They do have little pictures, screenshots of what it looks like inside the resource. They talk about pros, cons, and the bottom line. They talk about how you can teach with it, which goes fairly in-depth to talk about some of the different ideas of how to use it in your class. Um, it explains exactly what it does, and it also talks about how it is good or not good for learning. Um, they talk about the rating details, like what it, why they rated it the way that they did um, for engagement, for pedagogical practices, um, for support for kids and for support for us as teachers using the product. And then it lists the teacher reviews. And then underneath that, is what's really important to me is more information about that privacy rating. What do they do about data safety? Like how well do they collect, uh, protect the data that the site collects? Um, data rights, like what do I have? What right do I have as the teacher or does the student have as the account holder um, to the data that they're generating in that product? and then ads and tracking, tracking what advertisements are there and what tracking um, does the website do to mine data for um, ads. There's also a more complete evaluation that you can look at um, that gives even more detail than what's in that page that we were just looking at. 
So the privacy evaluation goes into a lot more detail about um, how this product works and the way that it collects data, parental consent, school purpose, all of that. So they do a very, very thorough job evaluating resources. So before you decide to use a resource in your classroom for the first time, this is a great place to look to determine does it fit your own personal beliefs about privacy and concern and does it also meet the requirements for our district. And then of course you can contact um, Larry Rigo, our technology person, to talk about whether or not it's safe for us to use and if it's covered under our technology use agreement with parents. <clears throat> so that's an overview of the EdTech reviews that are in here. They also have a professional development and advice section, um, which covers not just technology, it covers a lot of other things too. They do have webinars, they have student data privacy course, which tells you if you're relatively uh, new to that concept, it, this is a great resource for learning more about what we should be concerned about and why. Um, there's also articles and tips and other webinars about teaching in the classroom. They do connect some of them to tech, but not all of them are connected to tech. Um, and then they give regular kind of newsletter updates if you want to sign up for those. And they do also have resources in Spanish. Most of these are connected to their digital citizenship curriculum. And then they also have coronavirus support which is very similar to what's on the parent side. So for teachers, to me, the benefit is primarily in aiding communication to parents and then reviewing um, materials that I might want to use in the classroom. When we had a big purchase at the high school, this has been five to seven years ago, of new books for the school library, um, I didn't couldn't read them all when we were ordering, so I spent a lot of time on Common Sense Media looking up the books and determining whether or not they fit our um, criteria for books in the high school library. So it's great for resources like that. If you don't have the time to go through and read everything yourself, then at least you know what it is that you're putting in your classroom library or <clears throat> recommending to parents even if you don't have time to watch everything on your own. So that's Common Sense Media. I highly encourage you to check it out. It is a great resource and I think you your parents and even your students will find it very useful. Thanks for watching.